Hey guys, welcome back to the design studio. Today we are going to be making this beautiful centerpiece for your next event. Today's project is inspired by some of the venues that we work in. I don't know about you guys, but by us, the industrial feel is really strong. A lot of our old buildings that were warehouses are now turned to event spaces. So we have that original wood floors. It's a little bit beaten up, right? Gives a character and we have the pipes exposed and a lot of people are using the farm tables in there. So I wanted to come up with a structure that we could use on a long farm table and so that's what my inspiration for today was. So we're gonna start with a 36 inch board and I've already stained it and battered it. Took my hammer and I just beat this wood to death. I used the end of it to get these grooves in here. I beat the side of it. I wanted this to look like it's been through the mill. And so beat it down, then stained it with an ebony wood stain just to give it some color. I chose ebony because I, it'll blend in with any of the other tables that are being used and typically they're natural, so this will stand out. And then on the back of it, I took two pieces of trim onto the back. I purposely put them where you wouldn't see them from the outside, so they're inset. And I just wanted to give a little bit of height, not a lot of height, but just some so it looks like you can see it's floating on the table versus just laying flat on the table. I want it to look purposeful. So that is the wood base that I pre-made. And then we had, I wanted to use some pipe. So I used a half inch round pipe. These pieces, we started with a primer and we sprayed them all with primer. And then we went ahead and attached them, just screwed these on. And that's when I hit it with the soft iron Rust-Oleum. The reason I didn't go natural with them is because they rust. This will rust out when it gets wet and these are gonna be rental items. So I didn't really want it to rust. I really wanted it to stay beautiful. So primed it and then I used a soft iron. And you could see I pre prepped multiple sizes to get us going. So this is step one, getting the wood together. Step two, getting your posts together. Kind of reminiscent of the Oasis Lome we used to use back in the day, the acrylic rod. I still see people using them today and they're beautiful, but I just wanted more of an industrial feel. Kind of reminiscent of that. Next is one of my favorite finds. I use this product throughout the year. It is a wax with a metallic finish. So premium wax with a metallic finish and I chose the rose gold for this. This is great on foliages. You see, it's just a, a thing of wax. I, um, for the holidays, I'll use this on fruit if I'm putting it in an arrangement, just to give a little bit of a shimmer. So what you do with this is just take your rag. A little bit goes a long way. Really, it does. And you're just going to hit this. You're just going to swipe it a little bit. I really don't want it to be covered. The goal is just to have a little bit of shimmer once the lights go down and the candle glows happen. So just a little bit around. This dries relatively quickly. So, let's see that. No rhyme or reason, don't cover it up completely. Just give yourself a little bit of shimmer to it. And then you could always wipe it down a little bit if it gets too much. And you're gonna do that to all of your pieces that you would need for this project. The nice thing about this is you could really do it in any size, any length you wanted. So 
So really, it's this beautiful wax. All I did was give a little bit of a shimmer to the pipe. It aged a little bit, and it gives us a complete version. So the next step would be adhering these to the plank. This is where you're going to create your own pattern of what you want done. And mess around. Granted, you would have many more of these. I'll probably do seven pieces for the whole board. You take your drill. some screws and just screw them in. And once this is done, it's a great rental piece, like I said. It's custom. You've created something like this for your clients. So, you go ahead, you screw it in. What I want to do point out is I'll take some spray paint and just take a little bit onto a rag, get my paintbrush, and just go in and make sure you hit all of those spots. Because that'll take that shine right away from the screw and it'll look more rustic and aged. So this is the concept, and let me show you our complete version. All right, so this is the complete version. Very cool. You have different heights, different levels. You could take just votive candles and you glue them to the top of this. You could do a dish on top of this. So many possibilities. What I did once it was done is I sprayed it with a lacquer just to make sure any water doesn't damage the wood. Just wanted to make sure it's safe and going to be used often. So I prepped some of the caps. I lacquered them pre-advance and I put the rose gold on. And I am just going to screw these on real quick. And this would be good if you wanted to do a design dish up here really just you glue it right to this. And in the venues that are exposed pipe and vintage floors, this would be a perfect centerpiece on those guest tables. It's industrial without looking cheap. All right, there we have that set. So I'm going to take some adhesive strips and go ahead and pre-cut them in half. Because what I want to do next is put our candles on. I am going to be using a heavy candle, a pillar candle in a six inch cylinder. But just for movement purposes, I am just going to take a piece of this U glue tab, put it at the bottom, not directly in the center because the center is void. So I want to put a little bit to the edge and that'll just hold that right in place for us. I use two different size pillars within this design. I like the concept of having some of the glass see through.
imagine walking into the room and having these candles just glowing at this level. Two more, and then we'll be done with this. So this is the structure, the base, for our tablescape. I love it, I think it's gorgeous. I would go back in and clean these up a little bit, I'm sorry. I think it's gorgeous, but let's add some flowers to it. So, I would like to start with some gorgeous by Burnham Berry. And I am literally just going to feed this through the poles. I wanna be able to still see the gorgeousness of the structure without blocking it completely down. And feed it up and around. It's beautiful already, it's very rustic. can't see it from your end. Oh yeah, it's pretty. Then I have some gorgeous Smilax vines. And these just feed in. Very natural. And I would be at a reception doing the same thing to the reverse side. So it's not a one-sided arrangement. I would fill in the back just as much as I'm doing the front right now. Let's add some green ball for texture. And let me turn it this way so I can kind of see. Go. And a little bit of the pods, scabiosa pods. There's really no big heavy floral component. I'm not doing roses in this. I want it to be more natural and play the textures on the foliages and the pods, the berries. One final thing I want to add to the floral is some um, limonium. I'm using the white. I just wanted to give a little bit of brightness to it, and I want that airiness feel. I still want to keep it airy and moving. But imagine all of the possibilities that you can make with this structure. Just by visiting your local hardware being excited about trying something new. And 
and then the finals to light them. So you never know where inspiration is going to hit you. Always be open to it. Check out your surroundings. Become inspired by what you're seeing. Our lives are so busy and we stop to think about all of the beautiful things around us and how we can integrate that into our designs. And that is what we did here with this one. I hope you enjoyed the simple and easy design armature for a centerpiece table. Hope you get to enjoy it. As always, I love getting your pictures, so please send me the pictures that you take of the work that you've done that have been inspired by some of what we're showing here. And please subscribe below and hit like, and I will see you soon. Thank you. Have a great day. Hi right, guys, I'm back. So after looking at it from the front, I decided it actually did need a little bit of flowers. So what I needed to add, I wanted to add some air plants to it. I love that gray. It pulled it in. And then I have some sweet peas here that I think look really pretty in it. They're dainty. But yeah, I'm sure you guys have done it where you've finished something and you're like, oh, it needs a little something else. And that is what I felt like this arrangement when I turned around and I saw it from the front. It just needed a little bit more life to it. So, and I think that does it. Perfect. So, I say that as I'm adding more. Um, so again, thank you for spending some time with me today. If you like it, hit like below, subscribe to see our new videos coming out. Yes, that's perfect. Thank you guys so much. Have a great day.